Good morning, class. Um, we are going to do the walk cycle. Uh, so this is getting a figure to walk um, either across an image or uh, in place and static so it looks like they're actually walking. Um, I've animated seven seconds so far and we're going to continue doing the rest, um, but I'm going to show you how to do it from the beginning as well. So what we're working towards is something that's like this, where we've got a character moving um, in one direction, the legs feel natural, uh, the arms continue along, still pretty roughed out, but uh, it's to give you, you know, the basic feeling of it. In this assignment, I would like you to stay away from doing bubble figures. Uh, I think It'll be nice if we all have more uh, humanoid looking figures uh, for this. Uh, and so, so to start off, we're going to do a new file. And HTTV 1920 by 1080, uh, background color white, RGB, square pixels. Let's title this Walk Cycle Tutorial. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save it. Save as walk cycle tutorial. Make a new folder for this. Save it inside of there. Now, uh, so first thing you're going to do is create video timeline, and you, the next thing you're going to do is set your timeline frame rate to 12 seconds. You have to do this first, otherwise you, if you forget to do it, uh, you're going to have to go back at the end and it's going to reduce your, um, it's going to drop out some frames from your images. Now, one other thing is when you first create a new video uh, layer, you sometimes it'll give you like a maximum length and you can't extend it anymore. This is based off when you first import it. So right now, if we zoom all the way in, this is at uh, 60 frames. Say I want this to be, you know, I'm gonna have this, we're not gonna do an animation this long, but say it's 111 frames. As soon as I import or I place in a new blank video layer, it's gonna be the same size as that. As that and it's not gonna be able to go any longer than my original first layer. This is really important because say you need to do a five minute animation that's all on the same layer, then you can't, and you don't extend it, uh, your first layer out um, to five minutes, you only do it to three minutes, then you can only do ones that are three minutes long. I think it's pretty explanatory, but um, yeah, it, that's a weird glitch that Photoshop has. So let's lock this back layer. Actually, let's unlock that back layer. We're just going to do six or eight frames for right now. So you can see the duration when I'm crunching it in. Duration eight. There you go. And let's zoom that out so we can see all of these. Now, the basic structure that we're going to use is something that looks like, I think this one's a little bit better. Um, we're going to have a figure walking across, and we want all of the feet to be in the same place. This one has it separated out a little bit. But when, then this, when they land in the same place, this is going to be a helpful guide for uh, helping us you know, know that they're the figure's going to be in the same spot when they hit the down, hit the hit down. Next thing to look out for is their head level on the beginning and the end is going to be at the same level. And then right before they go to the middle part, uh, it goes down and then it goes above and then it goes up afterwards to then come back down. And it's got this like uh, sine wave kind of form to it. And we'll see as we go along. And if you ever need to um, 
see an example of this, make sure you get up and walk around or ask someone to walk around. Uh, it's really important to see examples of this. Let's just close that. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is create my first frame and last frame. And I want to be on the brush tool. Um, I've got it set to four as the size. If you click on this, you can adjust the overall size. I'm going to hardness is 10 as, or 100% and my color is black. And so first thing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reduce this a little bit. Make sure your, um, I'm gonna turn on onion skins in a minute. Uh, for right now, I'm not gonna put them on. Make sure your timeline sh shortcut keys are on. Uh, that way you can have, uh, you can press back and forth and it'll go and select your layer. Now, whenever you edit on here, say I edit on this part, on this frame, then it'll show me underneath that I've changed it a little bit. If I skip a couple frames and I make a drawing, then on this altered video layer, it shows me that I've made a mark. Uh, it doesn't show me what it is, but it lets me know that this frame has something in it. This is just helpful for uh, showing uh, your your things. So the keys that I'm going to use to see my um, my tool switch back and forth are mainly E and B. E is the eraser, and I've got it set on brush mode, and the size is 25. This I will probably adjust while I'm going on uh, through this tutorial. So I'm just going to get rid of that. And get rid of this. The other thing to make sure is you get your history set up. And we want to make sure that we've got the maximum amount of edits that we can make. So I'm going to go to preferences and just go to general for right now and go to performance and make sure your history states are all the way at a thousand. This will help you make sure that the, um, that you can go back a thousand times. You won't need that many, but, uh, just in case something happens. Click OK. Your history one is up here. So make sure you're on this layer. And the first thing I'm going to do is go back to my brush. I'm going to zoom in a tiny bit. And I'm going to draw a figure on this frame. Now there's going to be a lot of erasing and drawing and going back and forth. This is just how it goes. To start it off, it can be a little bit looser, but actually I need to see already. I'm just gonna go back. So the first thing I want to do is have this foot tilted up a little bit. And the next leg is going to come back. These are going to be pretty much straight. And the foot going down like that. Now if we look at, um, we can put in a little horizon line on here. Let's see. Ooh. In this layer, just so we've got place for go. All right. So that'll just stay there while we're going. So that way we can see that he that this character is actually stepping on something. I'm going to go back. Um, I need to ooh, see I was on that layer by mistake. Go back. Lock this one. Go back to here. We're going to worry about the arms a little bit later. I'd like you guys just to focus on getting these correct for right now. Um, then I'm going to go to, let's go back up to this. We're going to go to the last frame um, on this. So right now it's at seven frames instead of eight. It 
ends on 9, so I want to be here, which is n. All right, now I'm on that layer again. Just move it back to 8. Um, let's go back to your video layer. Let's go back up. And then I'm going to change my onion skin settings. I'm going to enable them first, and then onion skin settings. I'm going to have it set to 8 um, and 8 afterwards, just so I can see exactly what I'm doing. So I see that this step is going to be here. So I'm going to basically draw the same thing over again, um, but I'm going to switch the position of the legs. And for this, I really want you guys to um, draw everything out. Don't copy and paste. Uh, this is about drawing. So we're going to do this. You see the head is at the same level here. Um, came a little bit on the pot belly. Uh, and you can always go back and Tidy up your lines later. Ooh. See, I made them a little bit too. Because I want that foot to be right there. So if you notice, if we're looking at the onion skin, I've changed the position of these legs. So this leg, when it gets to here, it's the one that becomes the back. It's just like normal walking, um, usually, unless you're hopping. And so then I want to go to the middle. So this is, this is an 8. I'm going to go to 4. And now I can see both of these. And what I want to do is, if we look at our example, um, the layer or the, where the head is is going to be a little bit higher than where it is on either end, um, and that's because your leg the leg is straight in this position, and when the leg is straight, you end up just standing up a little bit taller. So I'm going to make I think that's a little bit too high. There is one more part where it's even higher uh, when it's on the tip of the toes. This is when the foot is flat. And so since the head is higher, where the waist is should also be proportionally higher. And so here, the foot is going to be all the way flat on the ground. Just like that. And then this one. So then if we were to scroll through, or if we were to play it, it's kind of there. We've got to do a lot more work. Um, so the next thing we want to do is do the in-betweens. And we're going to adjust our onion skin so we don't see as many. Uh, if we have eight on, we're going to see too many drawings. So I'm going to do two before and two after. So then if I go to here, in the middle of these two, this is the one that goes down a little bit. So it's going to be, I'm going to start the head about here. 
And just notice I'm not adding any real definition to the face yet. Um, you know, for this exercise, you really want to just focus on what the actual movement is. So at this point, the foot is going to also be flat. But since it's lower, I'm going to be a little bit more bent. And just keep in mind, like, whenever you're... Actually, that is too far out. You want to stay behind where your lines are. So this leg... Well, actually, that's not true. Ignore that. Um, and so this foot is in between these two somewhere. So we can have it go... And then you can do the in-between of this one. Um, I would change your onion skins to one and one at this point. And let's also do, I should have done this at the beginning, change 25, so that way they'll just a little bit later. And so since this one is going down on this movement, I'm going to have them go right in between the two. want this to fall between th the next two frames because if I jump ahead in, the, uh, in front of the line that comes after it then it's going to look all kind of wonky so I'm going to say that this foot has already come down this one is going to be in between the last one and there. So then if we're to play this forward, it's starting to get there. Turn up onion skins, let's just look at it real quick. Ooh, we got it. And this is part of the process, is just like, you can do a little bit, and then you can go back and edit it all together. Get rid of some of these lines. I think that's a little bit... So we're getting there. Uh, that step is starting to feel like a step. Turn our onion skins back on. And let's do the one in between here and here. So that leg there isn't totally out yet. So that one go right there. The next one is when it's totally straight. So I want this one to be a little bit bent. And this foot is going to be in between these. It's getting there. Now let's do in between this phase and this phase. Now, if we go back to our chart, um, you see that the foot is gonna raise up a little bit. So it's gonna go extra high and then it's gonna go up. So, and the head is then gonna go higher than any other time uh, in, in this session. So let's put this back, the onion skin settings on two. 
and 2. We go to 6. And this is when it's going to be higher. So, like right about here. Torso is going to be higher then. Foot is here. a little bit too much of an angle. And so this is when this one starts to swing out more. They've got it coming out a little bit. I, uh, it can really go either way. that swing from when you bring your foot from forward to back happens pretty quickly uh, in actual real person time. back to our oh, come up that one let's go to settings let's do one by one This foot is in between coming off the ground and pretty straight. So I'd say it's still pretty straight here. And then that leg is, let's have the foot here at about there, which means now if you've had something like anatomy uh, before that helps, but if not, um, that's also okay. This one is a little awkward. I think it's because this Getting there. Those ones are done. And then we need to do so. This is up high and then coming back down. is when the leg starts to bend. So here you can see it was straight in the one before, and then it's starting to bend back down. And this one, we can start to elongate.
sometimes the gradient tool pops out. Let's get rid of that. Like we're missing it. Let's see. Let's turn off our onion skins and see what it looks like. Pretty jaunty. Um, feels like that we need an extra frame in between here. This one is the one that feels a little weird. So let's put our onion skins back on. Oh, uh, you know why? Because this leg was coming out farther than it needed to be. Let's try this again. It feels a little bit better. So now we're going to continue it and do the same thing over again. And I'll show you why once we finish. So I'm going to zoom this out a little bit. Let's make sure we save it. Save. I want it to be double the length. So let's do to 16. We also need to unlock this one. Do that to 16 as well. So now we got there. And let's go to 16. And this one. And actually, it needs to be at 17. It ends on 17. Which means we get 16 as our last one. Let's lock this layer, go back to this layer, save it, enable onion skins, but let's make sure to get onion skin settings. Frames before, we just need 8 to 4. So then we're going to do the same thing that we did before. Oh. <laughs> Not that way. This foot is going to come down right there. walking off the edge. We're not going to worry about, oh, yeah, we're not going to worry about that too much right now. I want this to be at the same height. You can use guides to help you put them at the same height. Um, I'm just going to keep them, I'm just going to do it looking at it. View, clear guides, just to get them off. I find that sometimes the guides uh, actually interfere with the drawing line which is a little strange. This isn't the only program that that happens in, interestingly enough. It looks a little bit taller there, though. All right, now let's do the same process over. So I'm going to go to onion skin, skinning, onion skin settings, go back, so that's where 
the midpoint is 12. I know that he's going to be a tiny bit taller than he was before. He is a he. I'm sorry. It's. Oop. this to be a little bit higher. And then this one. How did we have it before? We had had four still behind. Let's put this down to two and two. Oop, that's three. Let's zoom in all the way. So this one goes a little bit lower. This torso feels a little weird, like really weird. So we're gonna build this up. Yeah, the torso is way too low. It's throwing off the game. And that's the thing with animation is sometimes you'll like. It's funny, your drawing usually gets better as you go along. Um, it's just like a natural fact because you're drawing so much that your your skills are just constantly improving. And so I want his foot to be you know, somewhere. Let's do one and one. Pressing G by mistake.
this is the one where he goes a little bit up. This one back at 101. We've only got two more ones to fill. there. Let's see what this looks like. Let's zoom out. I've got a walking figure. Not too bad. A little some stuff in the head that's going on. Um, so from here. So we've kind of got it moving forward. Now what if we wanted it to move in place and have a background kind of scroll by? Then we'd have to move all of our images onto the same spot. So first I'm gonna save this file, but I'm gonna save this one as uh, walk circle in place. Short. Now to do that, we have to move all of our images back to where the first one starts. So let's turn on our onion skins and let's set it to uh, our settings so that it's zero after and just one before. So we're the first one. And we want this to feel like it's constantly um, walking, so we do have to set it backwards just a tiny bit. I'm going to zoom in, and then let's zoom in just a tiny bit, and then uh, we're going to be using the marquee and the move tool. So what you do is you select it, and then go up to the move tool, 
and you just slide it back a little bit. Then go to select, deselect, or control D. So now it's kind of locking in place. Let's do this for the next one. Control D. There we go, I'm starting to get it. And then back to the loop tool. And then marquee. Oop, see, I missed a little bit there, so I don't want that. I want to be able to get the whole thing. Key, but I didn't select anything. Marquee, move you back. See that one? I'm not totally sure that it's in the right place. So let's go to select, deselect. I want to move back just a tiny bit more. It kind of blocks out the area that you need to see. Oh, that's okay. If you were to play it, All right. Nice thing is, is once you do this once, you'll have it. I want to like steadily go back just a tiny bit so that way it feels like it's it's actually moving in space because if it doesn't go back just a tiny bit it'll feel like it's wanting to move forward and then it won't feel like it's got realistic uh, physics to it as realistic as an uh, animation can be I think we forgot a little bit of Last one. All right. Well, let's see what this looks like. If we zoom out. Got a guy walking along. Kind of feels like the uh, what's below him is uh, is moving. So if we stop there, oh, stop there. We save it. I'll say we open up a new file.
We want it to be bigger than, uh, we want it to be longer than what we've got. So let's do this to 3000 by 1080. And let's do 4000. Because what we want to do is create a um, elongated space for this character to walk on and have it move slowly. So I don't even need to worry about creating a video timeline for this. I'm going to I'm going to create a straight line. If you hold down shift and hold down the pen, or if you draw, it creates a straight line. And then, you know, I've got a little tree here. Hey tree. And then I've got something here. It's, I don't know what that is. Oh. I don't know what's going on there. Um, we're just going to do a series of trees right now just to keep it simple. You save this, save as background one. And then you come back here, get rid of this layer. We'll just hide it for a minute. And then you do file, place, background one. And you set it to be the same size. Let's see. You can just drag it out. There we go. If we actually just make that a little bit bigger. If we move him down just a little bit, this moves the whole video layer down. All right. Now, if we slide this background and make it as long as is there. And then say we want, see this is important that it's a smart object. Make sure whatever you bring in is, um, you're here and you right click on it. Whoop. Convert to smart object. It already is a smart object, so it's really not, didn't really do anything. Um, I want to start all the way at this edge. So I'm gonna make a keyframe and then when we go to the end, I want it to go all the way other, uh, the other side. So I'm going to slide this over here and it creates a new keyframe. And that way, when we play it, it's gonna load it first. Like that's a little fast for what's going on but if we you know, say we only move it go to the end, and we only move it a tiny bit. Let's 
so not not the full way but maybe like halfway this is where it takes a little bit of play right there then we've got a guy walking in a landscape that actually feels right on aside from it kind of floating but it's also kind of you know maybe he's walking closer to it Um, let's say you wanted to, let's zoom this back out. Let's copy this layer. Duplicate layer. that next to each other. Stretch this one out. And then move this keyframe. And it'll go even slower. It's gonna just load it first. So then let's take this and export it. Render video. We are going to select our folder. I want it to go in animation production, in walk cycle tutorial. Uh, we're going to use Adobe Media Encoder, QuickTime. Um, animation high quality works. Document size 1920 by 1080, 12 frames per second. Field order preset is fine, document, square, 1.0, that's the same thing, all frames, um, and so we got 33 frames in there, and then do render. If we go to our folder, character walking. And I think that's good for now. Just make sure you save it.